So if you're anything like me, back in around 2014, you were probably really invested in Five Nights at Freddy's, playing the games or watching big YouTubers play the games because either they are too scary or just because you sucked at them. Or both. Regardless, I know I'm not the only one who's really invested in the series just by looking at how successful the series was and continues to be. But I know I'm not the only one who just kinda lost interest. There wasn't anything big that happened that suddenly made me not care about it, and saying I didn't care also probably doesn't fit how I really felt about it. And I feel like there are at least a couple people out there who feel the same way. I mean, if you look at it, the games came out in relatively quick succession, with the first four games coming out around three to four months after the previous installment. But I wouldn't necessarily say it was burnout either. I think I was just satisfied. There were four games, all with different playstyles, tons of stories and secrets to unravel, and with the fourth game, a feeling of fulfillment. Looking at it now, there were still tons of aspects of the stories and things that could or needed to be fleshed out, but the fourth game felt inclusive in a weird way. So by the time the fifth game came out, a little over a year after the fourth, not including FNAF World, it felt more like, oh, that's cool, I'll check that out later. But as time progressed and more and more things surrounding the FNAF franchise came out, after a couple years it became more of a feeling like, whoa, they're still making games? And how many Game Theory episodes? Then, about 11 months ago, when Security Breach came out, it seemingly re-sparked a lot of interest people and old fans of the series had in it, including myself. So, if you were at all able to relate to what I was saying earlier, and just now started paying attention to the series again, the question stands, what became of the Five Nights at Freddy's series? Or what happened to Five Nights at Freddy's? Or what happened after FNAF 4? I don't know, I haven't picked a title yet. Well, to start, let's look at the games that have been released so far. First, we have Five Nights at Freddy's, then Five Nights at Freddy's 2, then Five Nights at Freddy's 3, Five Nights at Freddy's 4, pretty much games that everyone's pretty familiar with. The typical survive five nights by closing doors, putting on a mask, making a baby laugh, and closing doors again. Then we have FNAF World, an adventure RPG of all the FNAF characters in a cutesy adventure form. Side note, it's actually around here where I stopped keeping up with FNAF. I remember being excited for the game and playing that 8-bit demo of the game, but then slowly losing interest before the actual game was released. Now we move on to the games that I'm not as familiar with, starting with Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. So from the very beginning, it's blatantly obvious this isn't your standard Five Nights at Freddy's because it's a sister location, as it deviates from the formula we've all grown accustomed to in the previous titles. Yes, you still have to survive five nights, and then there's a special night and a custom night, as well as all the easter eggs and lore you can stumble upon, but the core gameplay elements are entirely different, mostly because it's a lot more linear. That's typically said in a more negative connotation, but I wouldn't say so in this case. To better explain, the first four games were more focused on survival. It wasn't do this and this and be done with the night, the point was to survive the night. You had to work with what you were given to survive. The only things that would change are the tactics you needed to use. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, to deal with some of the animatronics, you would need to put on the Freddy mask. But if you have it on for too long, you might forget to use your flashlight on Foxy. Or you might forget to wind up the music box to stop the puppet from attacking you. The previous games just stacked more and more elements on top of each other to make it harder to survive. In Sister Location, you still have to survive, but the circumstances are different. In Sister Location, you go do a specific task in a specific area, only having to focus on whatever you're required to do to complete that task. Whether it's to hold the cover while you hide under the desk, or grabbing the power module from Funtime Freddy and BLON BLON! It's a complete change in the standard formula everyone was used to, and for the most part, it was pretty well executed. Another change was how the story was told. In the previous games, any semblance of lore was hidden behind literal walls. There was a lot more that needed to be done to gather said lore, before you could even begin to decipher and piece it together. In comparison, this game just really ham fists it right to the player. Not necessarily in a bad way, just in a way I don't think anyone was used to. When you're used to looking for scraps, having mostly everything laid out before you is a bit jarring. If you finish Sister Location before and know about the secret ending, you're probably screaming at the screen the whole time asking about it. So everything I've said is true, but there is also a secret ending you can unlock by correctly completing the death minigame and going to the private room. Doing this places you in a room very reminiscent to the security office in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, where you must close the doors and a vent to prevent animatronics from getting in. Beating this lets you unlock the good, but false ending to the game and shows that despite the game being different from the previous titles, it's still connected to its roots. You can also unlock Custom Night and after beating the different challenges it offers you, it will show you cutscenes of what happened after the original ending. I think it's here where the direction of the story takes a change to be a bit more linear of a story for casual players. Basically, the games from here on tell a story for casuals to latch onto, but a story underneath for those hardcore fans. Technically, alternate endings were a thing introduced in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, but in Sister Location, they truly begin to take form. 
form. An issue many people have with the series is that the stories are hard to understand and or figure out. If you played FNAF 1 or 2 without paying attention to the story, the game is fun, but it feels a bit empty, causing the player to dig through hours of videos of lore to figure out what is going on or just to understand the game they're playing. The barrier for entry was high in the earlier games, but Sister Location is able to address this by giving enough indication that there is a story going on, and if you beat the game, you'll get part of the story, but still not all of it. This is where the games begin to lower the barrier to entry so more people can play it, but raise it in terms of understanding the complete story. In a sense, the game stopped giving you the lock but making you look for the keys, and instead it started giving you the keys but making you look for the lock. The next installment of FNAF series is also its finale, sort of. Though the story does continue after this, and there are still three more canon games that take place after this, this is where the story that has been built up since Five Nights at Freddy's 1 ends. Again, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator is the sixth installment in the franchise and is by far the most unique and different among the six. If Sister Location was a series dipping its animatronic toes in the water, Pizzeria Simulator is a series diving headfirst into the cup of water. As it looks and feels like it shouldn't fit, yet it does. Pizzeria Simulator is a pizzeria tycoon with FNAF elements mixed in. The game on its surface has little to do with anything Five Nights at Freddy's other than the characters and location. Its style is very similar to the style seen in the game FNAF World, while its gameplay is reminiscent of FNAF World in terms of the mini games you can play while running the pizzeria, but other than that, it's your standard tycoon game where you upgrade your restaurant to bring more customers in so you can buy more stuff for your restaurant so you can make more money, while also having to deal with any lawsuits thrown your way, which is probably the scariest thing in the series, and so on. In the game, there's talk of a big party on Saturday, which is this game's final night. Though the tycoon aspect of the game is fun and something that I would really like to see fully fleshed out in a roller coaster tycoon type game, there is also the other half of the game that I haven't mentioned yet. At the end of each day, you're tasked with deciding what to do with animatronics found outside the pizzeria. You can either toss them back out, or you can run a couple of checks to see if they're worth salvaging. Each night, the value of the salvage increases, which results in more money you can use to buy things in the pizzeria pizzeria if you do decide to keep and salvage the found animatronics. After completing the salvage for each night, you are required to do a couple tasks on a computer surrounded by two huge air vents. This part of the game is extremely easy and almost monotonous if you threw out the animatronics. You see, in this game, you choose how hard the actual FNAF portion of the night will be based on what animatronics and how many animatronics you chose to salvage. This salvaging section actually plays a big role in the game's endings. Yes endings. We'll get back to that. Focusing on the gameplay for the office part of the night, you'll find it's pretty similar to FNAF 3 where you have to use a sound lore to keep the animatronics away from your office, but if they do get close, you have to look at the vents with your flashlight, with the added difficulty that it's hard to hear the animatronics due to the airflow. But if you turn the AC off, the office will get too hot and you'll pass out and have to restart. Also, the animatronics are attracted to noise, which is generated by your computer. So if they're close or are going to enter the vent, you have to turn off the computer so they don't get drawn into your office, but if you turn off your computer, you can't do your assigned tasks for the night. If you can do all this and make it to Saturday without going bankrupt, you will have successfully completed the game. If you do go bankrupt, you also completed the game. The game has a total of seven endings. Though this isn't the first or last installment to have multiple endings, this was the first game that had it to this magnitude. You have three endings that give a lot of lore and are very important to understanding not just this game's story and ending, but the entire series. Then you have four endings that are a bit more on the the fun goofy side. Like one of the four endings is if you have a liability risk of 50 or above, you're blacklisted from the pizzeria. Another is as mentioned previously, if you go bankrupt, you get the bankruptcy ending where you're let go from Fazbear Entertainment for being a lost cause. I think the thing that sets this game as the definitive end is the fact that the good ending is actually the default ending. Technically the good and bad endings are default as the way you get the bad ending is by not salvaging all the animatronics, while the good ending is you did salvage them all. Based on how easy it is to salvage them and the monetary incentive the game gives you to salvage them, I'm just going to say that the good ending is actually the default ending. Even putting that technicality aside, if you look at FNAF 3, the way you got the good ending was by pressing tiles on the wall and doing other steps, while comparatively, this game just has you play through it normally. Yeah, there is a better ending through the lore keeper ending, but that ending just adds another detail to what is seen in the good ending. I wouldn't be surprised if what happened to some fans in FNAF 4 happened here. I started this video 
video saying after FNAF 4, I was still interested in the series, but the fourth game made it feel complete. So I wasn't really pressured into keeping up with it as closely anymore. I could totally see people feeling the same way about this game. It wraps everything up so nicely to the point where you're not even sure where else they could go with the series. On top of that, it's theorized that Ultimate Custom Night, which acts as the custom night for this game, is just Purple Guy's personal hell, so the story just feels complete. Everything for the most part is wrapped up. What now? Where do we go from here? The next game in the franchise, I think, kind of plays into this idea. I mean, the story did end and there's nothing to go forward on unless a new story is created. So what kind of game do you make if you've already told your story and made all the games you wanted to make? Well, you just slap them all together! The next game in the franchise is Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, a VR game that contains the first three games and a little bit of the fourth, as well as some extra content expanded upon from other games, like animatronic repair or vent repair. This game feels more like a revisiting of the previous games in the series, more so to reminisce. Yeah, it does have new content and even the foundation for a new story, but when you play, the focus is on revisiting those older games and just having fun with them again. Taking a step back from the story and plot lines to instead focus more on looking back at the journey we took from the very first game to where we are now, seeing how far the games have come from when they first started and taking a moment to appreciate it. Yeah, VR can be a bit clunky and you could say that recreating the first four games in 3D was an easy cash grab, but I wouldn't necessarily agree. You can still feel there was a lot of care and effort put into this game and it's reflected by the actual content seen in the game. The extra modes, the meta dialogue, the spooky mysterious story taking place in the background, it all has that original FNAF feel. I just think this acts more or less as a send-off to what we know as FNAF. What we're used to, the gameplay, the story, the easter eggs, it all changes for better or for worse after this title. Yes, there are the seeds to a new story within this game, but the game itself acts more like a love letter to everything that came before, and gives the audience time to appreciate and look back at the series, but in a new light. Because after this, everything changes. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The next game in the franchise is actually a mobile game. I don't know how to get footage for this segment, so enjoy Markiplier's playthrough for the background. Five Nights at Freddy's Special Delivery is an AR game where the animatronics come to you at your house. The easiest way I can describe it to those unfamiliar is just imagine Pokemon Go, but instead of trying to capture cute little animal thingies, you're defending yourself from Freddy Fazbear who just busted down your door. But actually, the way the game works is every couple of minutes an animatronic will come visit you, and depending on what animatronic it is, you have to do certain things to capture it. So a regular endo skeleton can be caught by shining your flashlight on it and then shocking it when it charges at you, to Springtrap, who depending on the color of his eyes when he glitches, you need to look at or away from. But also you need to find where he glitches out at so you can know whether you're supposed to look away or at him or else you'll die. Also his eyes can change color mid glitch and also he can make your screen go static where if you don't shake it you also die. And also also it's harder to find where he's at when he's not glitching due to the lower interference compared to the other and also Yeah no I'm gonna stop it there since there's a lot that goes into it. Though the game doesn't just stop at amateur animatronic encounters, you can also build your own animatronics to collect parts to repair or upgrade them or send them to go attack your friends. There are a couple other things you can do, but that's where the real meat of the game lies. After all that has been said, you may be wondering why this is being mentioned as if it's involved in the main storyline. That's because it is. The story found in this game is through messages between different characters. I'll cover the stories of the games I've talked about so far in another video, stay around till the end to figure out why. But to give a brief overview, this game acts as a way to introduce a character that will become very important to the story in the next title, while also tying that character to the events that occurred in Help Wanted. Since this game acts more as a bridge between titles, let's actually talk about the most recent game in the franchise so far that Special Delivery connects Help Wanted to. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is the most recent game in the series so far, with DLC set to release sometime next year. Aside from Special Delivery, this is the game that deviates the most from the standard FNAF title. Yes, we talked earlier about how Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator made changes to the form Formula. In this case, though, it's not so much a change in the formula, but a complete doing away with it. Security Breach is the first open world or free roaming game in the series. Gone are the days of point and click. Instead, a Security Breach offers a wide variety of ways to interact with the environment and things within it. In previous games, the only differences between people's playthroughs were maybe their strategy, but mainly the random events that could occur. And I don't want it to seem as if I'm downplaying that. Not only was that at the time,
time a very good way to get multiple people involved in the community, showing off the rare events that happened to them, but maybe didn't happen as much to anyone else, but it also gave people a reason to keep replaying to see if there was any other secret things that no one has found yet. Overall, it was fun and kept the interest in those games high even after it was out for a while. Security Breach is able to take this further and offer a unique gameplay experience, not just person to person, but also playthrough to playthrough. There are tons of choices and routes to take in this game, naturally because it's free roam, so not only do you get a unique experience each playthrough by taking an entirely different path, but also choices within the game can open up different opportunities. You can play through the game with the Fazer Blaster to stun animatronics from wide distances, or with the Faz Cam that can still stun animatronics, but also open up secret doors. Now, I'm not going to say that Security Breach is the greatest open world game and gives you as many choices as games like Fallout, I'm just making the point that it does offer you some choice. Choice not seen as much in the series up to this point. Moving on, in the game you play as a kid named Gregory who snuck into the pizza plex but is now hiding from the security guard. Freddy, being your main man, decides to help you escape the pizza plex, but by the time you get to the exit, it closes and you have to survive until 6am before you can escape. As you progress through the game, you see the time change in increments until finally 6am where you can make a mad dash to the exit. Before we talk about what happens there, let's talk about the previous 5 hours. Throughout the game, you're tasked with going to collect certain items that will make your survival easier, but also progress you into the later levels. Most areas are locked behind security badge clearance, so the game will guide you to the ones you need, but you're also free to stumble upon or find the rest yourself. It's not as simple as finding the badge like a collectible, there's usually a challenge involved with getting the badge. Also, as mentioned earlier, you can make a choice by playing through different events that will earn you the Fazer Blaster or the Faz Cam. These will help deal with the animatronics that are after you. Oh yeah, did I mention that? Chica, Monty, and Roxy, as well as an army of security bots are the main things you must look out for. The security bots mainly just block paths and make navigating the pizza plex a little bit more difficult. Getting caught by them summons one of the three mentioned previously, depending on where you're at. All of them are unique in their own way, like Chica usually charges straight at you and is a bit more easy to manage, while Roxy lunges at you and can get you from afar. If you're caught by any of the main three, it's game over. I say three because as I said, Freddy's your main man and wants to help you escape. You can call Freddy over to you and climb inside him to get past animatronics or get to places you wouldn't be able to get to without him. As you've probably noticed so far, I haven't really delved too deep into spoiler territory for the games or their stories. So keeping to that, Security Breach is a fun game that introduces a lot of new mechanics and lore to the series. If you haven't played it yourself, I really recommend checking it out through either just picking up the game yourself or how the majority of people probably experienced it and watch Markiplier play it. Ready! Freddy! Freddy, please. Oh my god, no. Not like this. Not like this. Please. Uh, give me in, give me in. Freddy! Freddy, you bitch! Freddy! So yeah, that was a brief overview of all the games that have come out since Five Nights at Freddy's 4. But even then, that's not everything, as there are spin-off games like Freddy in Space 2 or Security Breach Fury's Rage that I didn't even get to mention. Just like how people who covered FNAF before me probably felt, there is a lot more to the series than I initially thought. As I worked on this video, it ended up becoming way bigger than I could possibly imagine, and because of that, I'm gonna have to split it up into different parts. There's a lot more, and I mean a lot more to cover about the series, so much so that it's almost a bit overwhelming. But I'm excited to talk more about the series that means so much to me and I'm sure to everyone watching this video. So if that is something you're interested in, subscribe to see more stuff like this, leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. Also follow me on Twitter to stay updated with whatever I got going on. Also, also I live stream both on this channel and my Twitch channel. Hop in chat, say hi, I'd love to have you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.